Hi everyone, this is Jeremy Davis. I, I'm using this opportunity to, to use this platform to, to speak to everyone about some topics that uh, I get asked a lot about. Um, and uh, we're going to start off today with some basic information about CDH1 and hereditary diffuse gastric cancer. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some common uh, questions that are asked. Um, and maybe at the end of this, you'll have some more information, and then uh, we'll move on to some other topics later on. So the first question is, uh, why are you studying CDH1 in gastric cancer? Well, I, I understand uh, that people want to know if there's some you know, special story uh, behind all of this, but the truth is I just want to understand why some people with a CDH1 mutation develop stomach cancer, and some don't. Uh, I also want to understand why CDH1 mutation leads to such an aggressive form of stomach cancer that often spreads throughout the abdominal cavity. Stomach cancer is very hard to treat, and by understanding how CDH1 mutation leads to stomach cancer, I think we can find better ways to treat stomach cancer for all people. Another question that I get asked is, is if someone has a CDH1 mutation, what should they do? Well, first, I would say take a deep breath what you really want to do is get information. And if your genetic counselor or your doctor has limited information, then you need to seek out information from a reputable source. So I would recommend a few places. One is www.nih.gov, and you can search for hereditary diffuse uh, gastric cancer, or even CDH1. Another site uh, to check out is nostomachforcancer.org, and other uh, uh, groups or, or um, advocacy groups uh, that, that deal with stomach cancer. Next, you want to find a place or a person with real experience taking care of patients with CDH1. So there are a few major university medical centers that have expertise and others don't. So you need to find a place that has experience. And certainly you can always reach out to me directly. So the next question that usually comes up is, I have the mutation, what do I do? Well, first of all, anyone with a pathogenic or likely pathogenic CDH1 mutation is recommended to have a total gastrectomy. But before you make that leap, you also need to have uh, an upper endoscopy, otherwise called uh, EGD. Somebody needs to look in your stomach and just make sure everything looks okay and takes biopsies. Again, this should be somebody that has expertise in CDH1. I also want to mention that if your CDH1 mutation is classified as a variant of uncertain significance or a VUS, you're not necessarily going to receive these same recommendations. We're going to talk about this later on. Overall, uh, the next question is, is usually why is gastrectomy recommended and, and what is my risk of developing stomach cancer? So these are really good questions to ask. Overall, we believe that the risk of developing stomach cancer is very high compared to unaffected people. So stomach cancer in the United States is very uncommon. It only affects about 27,000 people a year. So, so you may never even have known of anybody who had stomach cancer. However, if you have the CDH1 gene mutation, your risk of developing stomach cancer could be as high as 70% in your lifetime. Now, that seems pretty high, and in some families, it may actually be that high. However, recent studies have suggested that the risk may actually be more in the 30 to 50 percent range. With that said, remember, a one in three chance of developing stomach cancer is still too high. And because stomach cancer is very hard to treat, and most often it's diagnosed at a late stage, um, that's why we recommend gastrectomy. But what we ultimately need to be able to do is give patients their own unique risk of developing stomach cancer. Because right now, these estimates are pooled risks, meaning that the risk that we're saying is based on all CDH1 mutation carriers and doesn't tell you exactly your individual chances of getting stomach cancer. And you have to make a decision that's right for you. We'll talk later about alternatives to gastrectomy, such as surveillance. But right now, those strategies are not really that great. And we're also not talking about breast cancer risk today, but we will at a, at a later time. 
So the next is, why uh, is being part of a clinical study important for patients with a CDH1 mutation? Well, CDH1 gene mutations and hereditary diffuse gastric cancer syndrome is very rare. And I tell people it's kind of like if you had a Ferrari. You wouldn't take your Ferrari to a Toyota dealership. You'd take it to a Ferrari dealer, right? So a clinical study for rare problems is designed not only to take care of you, the patient, but also conduct research at the same time so that we can try to understand it better. Because if we don't do the research, then in 20 years we'll be in the same place that we are today with no more knowledge about this rare problem and no better ways to take care of it. So a question that's common is, what's the benefit of being part of a, a clinical trial? Well, most trials offer enrollment and treatment without charging for medical care. For instance, a CAT scan or blood work are done at no cost in most clinical trials. Other costs may be reimbursed uh, or uh, provided with some assistance. But most importantly, I think you're helping your family, your family members, or others who have the same problem that you do. It's kind of like paying it forward. But you also have an opportunity to learn more about yourself and your own health as we learn with you. So some questions that we haven't answered yet are questions about gastric cancer surveillance or breast cancer surveillance. We haven't talked about novel methods for performing surveillance like confocal endoscopic microscopy. We haven't talked about genetic testing for young uh, kids under the age of 18. And we certainly haven't talked yet about gastrectomy and the ins and outs of gastrectomy. So if this goes over well, then next time we'll talk about those topics. In the meantime, email me, ask me questions that you want me to address, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you.